Gaming Insomniacs Call of Duty High School Scholarship Tournament here. I'm um, Rabies alongside Rob, AJG. What's going on, brother? We are ready to have a great time. This is going to be semi number one. It's gonna. It's interesting because in this semi, actually in all the semis, these teams really weren't that tested yesterday. Uh, no, I think only one team lost a map right. out of all four teams. Sure. Uh, Bayshore, uh, we have Watervillette, is that how I say Water Valley, it? Water Valley, Valley, right. Remember, I'm from the south. I'm from the west <laughs> coast. Mexico. I have ne New Mexico. I haven't seen any of this. But these, none of these teams even lost a map yesterday. Somebody's got to lose a map. I'm excited to see what's going to happen today. Well, we're starting out here on Hardpoint, and it's going to be down on Arsenal. That's the map type here. As we take a look, Spade's coming on in. There's that zip line right into the wall. Takes some, a little bit of positioning here, and already fucked out with nice two kills. He's got a beautiful viewing angle. This is going to, for everyone at home, Hardpoint is not something that you, if you watch other Battle Royales or things like that, this is not what your normal thing. Right. Hardpoint, the idea here is that you have to hold a position. If you see here, it's now 13 to 0. These, the, the 13 actually represents time that they're holding it and defending their position. Correct. First to 250 is going to win, but that's seconds. So they've got to hold it 250 seconds before their opponent does that. Very true here. As we see, Waterfleet starting out extremely aggressive. They get the opening hill, 27 seconds and rising here. That puts a little bit of pressure now onto Bayshore to make a play. But it seems so far that they're all locked up. Color blinding does wind up taking out Teslo. So that'd be one for Bayshore. They now need to work about with that rotation. And there it is. Justin gets down another. 40, almost 40 to zero. Right. Bayshore has got to get up here. As soon as I say that, got now it. they're going to be on the board. It's important that you just don't get buried early here. When you get these 70, 80, 90 point leads, it just gets in your head a little. Absolutely, and I had you know been sitting on Twitter yesterday trying to just look at some things, and you know Spades has been uh, was a player that tweet actually popped up in my feed, and he was talking a lot of junk saying that this is free, he's going to it, and he's going against a Grizz that is the champ. He, he's that's the guy here. He's on the Gaming Insomniac team, and so far what we're seeing is Bayshore wind up putting up thirty already back on the board, and they're about to pass Water Valite, who's had and it's been Hounds and Spades of Bayshore that have just been having such a great uh, symmetry, symmetry, excuse me as they wind up getting this first kill here. And Grizz has got to step up here. Uh, as one of the players who's like the semi-pro, right. uh, Grizz is now like four and five. Sure. Uh, this is definitely something that he's not used to, to not be leading the pack. It's actually TJ that's five and two. This is going to be very interesting. It's super close, 48 to 44. I'm interested to see if Grizz is going to be as dominant through these next semis as he was you know, yesterday. Well, it's going to be the harder matchups. We've seen that so far, and it's already a, uh, an intense one. 55 seconds here for Bayshore, who has just totally swung the opening set now. I know it's still early, first to 250. Nice, Spades there, coming in with the melee, and he takes down two. Double kill for Spades. I am loving what I'm seeing from Spades and colorblinding. Both of them, 7-4 wow, now, 6-4, 8-4, really making a push here to put uh, uh, Grizz... And these guys, they have never had a challenge. It's now 75 to 48. I am completely stunned that this is a challenge that Grizz hasn't been able to step up to yet. Yeah, I'm really liking what I'm seeing, not only because I'm from Long Island, very <laughs> familiar with Bayshore, and I'm just... Because also, Spades, when I saw that tweet, I was thinking to myself, this guy's better back this up. When you come talking like this, like, oh, right, 12-0, 4-0, you got to back this up moving forward. And so far, Spades has done exactly that, and he's got a lot of help from color blinding as well. Hounds, Justin, and uh, Defiety playing that support role. But look at this now, Justin, 8-4, and four, Spades, 8-5. and five. When we look over at Waterville, it's Rob, 3-6, and 4-7, and 3-4. and four. They're running into some trouble Wow, and, and Bayshore is... I I am kind of concerned in that time that it took them a little while to make that rotation, but it didn't matter. They just came in and just straight took it. They didn't even care. Bayshore, they, they made a late, late rotation, still end up holding the point. Yeah, you know, I right there, I just love what I saw from TJ. He, him and Teslo came right into the hard point. They wind up picking up two. As we're now watching, it's going to be Bayshore rotating around the right-hand side here. They still have that point, and I thought with that three kill coming out from Water Valley, they were going to take it back, but no, it's Bayshore now with 123 and rising. 20 seconds or less on this point. They are still just going to hold it. I see, what do we have moving us over here? Uh, Hounds making a little bit, and making a little rotation here, and right. spades. This is good. This is what I was talking about earlier, is that they made a little late rotation last time. This time, they are all over it. 140 to 58. 
And so far, not much from Grizz. He's in that 7 and 11 negative count there, but TJ winds up picking up a nice double kill. It's 56 seconds, 142 for Bayshore. Waterfleet has taken the hill now. That's the red team, folks, as we take it now. And a nice kill there by TJ if they needed that one there. Waterfleet, like, what, what, how do I say this? Valite. 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 Like, it rhymes with elite. They've got to be playing more right. elite right now. They are getting buried 70 points, but making a move. I, I still, I haven't really seen anything from them yet that would make me think that they're going to be able to get over this with Bayshore. Well, here's the problem now. Three kills come out here for Bayshore, and they're sitting on ultimates. Waterfall lead is. We saw the Tempest there. It, he had it active. He could have clutched that two on one, but he ha saved onto it. The problem is that only 100 points left here in this first map, and you never want to go down the first set. Waterfall lead coming back slowly, but will it be enough as TJ picks up one late? I was going to say, TJ really is clutching up 16 and 10. I, I really like what I'm seeing here. But this is, he ought great player. Right. And from what we saw yesterday, this is not out of his wheelhouse to be able to carry his team. And Grizz now is also going to have to try to do the same thing. 19, or excuse me, 9 and 13. Going to need to see some movement. 80, 81 to 1. It, Bayshore is doing their thing right now. And you can just watch the kill feed and say the whole and see the whole thing. And even if you look at the map here, the mini map to the top left, all you see is orange in the hard point. Bayshore is getting kill after kill after kill. And you can see right now, is Water for Elite, Lightning Strike ready. It's going to go right into the ultimate. Uh, sorry, almost there, but still, Bayshore is in total dominance. It's straight up for the kills here. Uh, this is Defiety has got Hellstorm ready. He's got Lightning. This is this should be easy. They only have wow. A, they've got about 30 seconds left in here, so they can push this up to about 220. Probably gonna hold the ultimates here, so that when they do this rotation, then they can use it, get right. those last few points, and just finish this up. However, Rob, we gotta talk about Water Valide a little bit. What do they need to do right now? Grizz has been getting worked. He chip TJ of Water Valide, pick up two kills. This is their chance. What I'm noticing from Water Valide, Rob, they're not rotating after they yet even wanted to kill. They gotta start getting more aggressive. Uh, Water Valide's issue here is they've got one guy on their team who is really doing it. Again, it's TJ, 17 and 13. Grizz wow. is 10 and 16. Silver's 8 and 14. Tesla's 8 and 11. They've gotta get this plus minus back together right. because it is 2 218 and counting. This is could be the end of their day, especially with uh, Defiety, I think it's how it's Yeah, Defiety. With two ultimates just waiting, and they're they're talking right now in their comms. Right. They're like, how do we want to do this? How do we want to get these last 20 seconds? Right now, they don't even have to worry about it. He's still just holding on to it. The fight, he now picks up a triple kill. Beautiful airstrike there coming from the top. 231. Oh, and Hounds gets another. Bayshore in total control, and it looks like Water Valide is absolutely stumped. Water Valide doesn't really know oh, what oh, oh, it's a double. double. Too easy, too easy. Got a connection interrupted right now, but that's all right. I'm... Look at the countdown. This is just easy money. Going to just go finish this up for Bayshore. This is going to be a That's game it. one victory for Bayshore. And if you're Water Valide going 3-0 and yesterday, never losing a map, what are you saying to each other? Well, you got to be nervous here. You got to be thinking to yourself, wow. Not, not only was that, that seemed pretty free. Yeah. They, you know, they got the first 50 points. Water Valide started coming out very strong. They were looking aggressive. But as soon as Bayshore settled in, was able to get that second hill, it was all Bayshore the entire time as we're watching the Fiety with this amazing clutch triple kill here coming out. I love what I saw from Spades, okay? Spades yesterday was running a 3.A1 kill the, I mean, 3.81 wow. in a tournament wow. with humans. That's crazy. That is nuts. nuts. And then to be able to continue going into the semi, doing what he did today, I really like what I saw. This is the kind of pressure you have to put on another team to get in their head. <laughs> As we take a look at the stats here after game look number at that. one. 44,211 damage from wow. Spades. You can just see here, and it's just, it's a total collective here for Bayshore. 3,300 for Color Blinding, 3,100 for Defiety, 3,000 for Justin. Every single number is just nice and big and growing. Waterfully unable to surpass 94 points. They've got to make an adjustment, and I feel it's got to be Grizz that steps up. Yeah, look at what the numbers from Grizz and from Silver. One and ten. One and ten. We've got to do a little bit more here. Right. Uh, and 
it's only map one. Right. There's been plenty of opportunity uh, left in this particular match. So they don't have to panic just yet, but they got buried. Yeah. They got buried in map one. Uh, good thing maybe maybe they're going to be better uh, at other situations, right? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't. it's not always going to be hard point. Uh, and there's going to be other types of games that are coming. And so if you haven't seen Call of Duty uh, in the CWL format, we're going to be switching in from... It's going to be, we can do hard point. Right. We got tons of other stuff coming. Well, so far as we take a look, once again, still on the stat screen here, it's, it's, it's really just Bayshore. Totally positive across all their members. And Water of Elite did not have that intensity. What I want to see from Water of Elite, most importantly, is they were getting kills. Now, they weren't always winning exchanges, but they were definitely getting kills. When they get the kills, push towards the side that you got the kills on, play as a collective unit, and make sure you're getting in the hill. There was too much downtime where... Bayshore was just racking and racking and racking. Get in the hill. Yeah, I'm just kind of concerned when we get into an S and D map, which is search and destroy, where you only have one life. Right. Are they going to be able to stop Spade? Someone on what uh, on Water Elite has got to step up and say, "Listen, I can take this guy down. I can do." All We're muted. Oh. <laughs> Search and destroy. It's time for Water of Elite to step up. They had not lost one map right. all day yesterday. Right. They dominated every single play. I mean, they dominated the other team so bad, like you said. Right. One of their players was on Twitter like, this is easy. Yeah. I don't even have to worry about it. But now, when their backs are against the wall, what are they going to do? Right. Search and destroy is very different. You're not going to be able to respawn. You're not if you make those mistakes, you're going to get punished. Right. So, right. are they going to be able to step up to the plate, even it up, or will it be too obey short? Well, search and destroy a much slower game mode here. It's only one kill. Remember, and you get eliminated, and you have to wait the rest of the round. Uh, and, and that is a very important thing here because it was base short. I was out slaying Waterfleet. Now, even though the slaying does take a measure in search and destroy, if Waterfleet's able to get those first kills, it's still very detrimental and can come out with wins against Bayshore. And you can see here that both of these teams are very passive right now. Uh, the Spades oh, already planted the bomb. Wow! And now they're going to have to say, all right, is Water of Elite going to be able to do anything here? They ended up, look, they are pushing. They're going to be able to get the first two kills. Wow, Water of Elite oh, loses a third. They lose three. And even though the bomb goes down by Bayshore, they're pushed in. That bomb forcing the pressure of Water of Elite to come in. And just like that, Bayshore wraps right. it up based on the pressure from that Spades early, early bomb plan. Yeah, I think that was actually Water of Elite, right? That won that round, not Bayshore. No, yeah. was that Bayshore? Bayshore won that round because Spades got the bomb down and then they got all five kills. You were absolutely, well, you're, wow. This, what a massacre. Yeah, that was, I mean. So the, 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 pre, <laughs> the pressure from the bomb going down early forced Water of Elite in, like we're seeing right here in the replay, and it was Justin as well as Spades and all of Bayshore that wound up cleaning up the kills off that bomb plant. And so far, I mean, Water of Elite looks out of it. Wow, that is crazy. And if you're Water of Elite right now, you really have to think, of, okay, guys, we might have to go back to the drawing board. We might have to do something a little bit different right. here because not only do you lose the first map, you get devastated sure. in the first and second search and destroy. And we talked about that. When the kills are permanent, you have to really be on point. You can't miss your shots. All right, now both teams congregating around A, but it was actually two kills, Teslo and TJ, that wind up picking up for Water of Elite. And right now it's five on three in favor of Water. They are looking to bring it back here, and I like what we're seeing here. Congregating around A and just holding it down. They know they have the position. Will they be able to clutch it out? Water of Elite has got to love this. To finally be able to put something on the board where they have an advantage. They cannot mess this up. They've got to be able to Ooh. do it. And as soon as I say that, it is now three versus four. And that is really important for Waterfleet is to make sure that they get this one. Right. Get this one. Oh, wait. There. Again. Three on three. Three on three. 
Color blinding winds up taking down another. He's going to run in. Oh, it's TJ trying to get out of there. And it looks like, oh, Grizz finally getting a nice headshot there on color blinding as Waterbleed takes a 3-2. to two. Both teams now pressing around here in the middle of the map. I, I like what I'm seeing now. Waterbleed is starting to feel themselves. They need to be just there like it that. Is. Get a little bit of momentum. Right. Call of Duty is that type of game where it's kind of like with basketball or anything like that. It's a game of runs. Right. It's Street a game of energy. Runs. Yeah. Because you could easily turn this particular map win into another win. Right. It's moving on into the finals. Finally, they've got something positive to hang their hats on. Me for Water for Lead, it all comes in the rotations. Now, I'm noticing that Bayshore definitely has some better guns on their end. They're definitely getting, you know, more of the high-intensity skirmish wins. But like we saw there, when Water Fleet was able to set up, get in their spots, they were able to get the right picks. As we're starting now, round number three, it's 1-1 apiece. Water, can they do it? Do you think that, what, based on what you saw, is this going to be a Water Fleet game or is this going to be a Bayshore game? I, the Water, Water Valley, I think it's Bay Shore all the way, unless Water Valley can start taking consecutive rounds in a row. I need to see the energy increase, because right now, Bay Shore just looks to have better guns. And at the end of the day, despite rotation, Tesla comes and gets one. Spades trades off. It's 1-1, one, one, and it's Grizz with a double kill. Finally, Rob. Wow. This is... Eh. Water Fleet's feeling themselves now. Right. They put three kills on the board. It's 4v2 advantage over to Water Fleet, and... They've got to not make mistakes. I want to see cleaner play coming from Water Fleet. Water Fleet. Right. They, you, if you're when, when it's four two, you need to make this should be wrapped up. Right. You should right. Get together. Make sure you do some bait and switch. There is no reason that if you have four that you just can't bait and switch and finish out Bayshore here. Well, right now we're seeing the last two members, the Fidey and Justin of Bayshore. They're rotating around the right side of the map here as they're heading over to A, but they don't realize Waterfleet, really, everyone just sitting on over there. And there's they're, they're trying to, but they see one, and it's a 2-2. Two, two. Big error. Justin was, Grizz, sorry, was way overextended. And it's going to be a double. Justin, right now, it's one-on-one. -on -one. This game is so close. Bomb is down. Bomb is down. What is, is it going to be? I, I, oh. I don't even know what to say here. One hit. Oh, wow. That so close. Defiety winds up clutching it. And it just seemed like that last member of Waterfall Elite, I don't know if he couldn't locate him or didn't know where he was at, but Jesus, he got him right there. And it was just so perfect. Great double play by Grizz here. I thought Waterfall Elite had it, Rob. Yeah, it, they should have had it. Right, There's right. no question it two. when it's four versus two, right. you can pair up, all right? And you just hunt them down. Hunt them down. Have to. Now, you're down 2-1. All that momentum you had in the back of your head, you're like, if we can't beat them when it's 4-2, how we are we where are we at? But if you notice there, Waterfully had it once again. They were not congregated on a central focal point. One was outside on the ledge. The other one was walking out into the middle. Easy picks. You can't do stuff like that. And you, what you saw with Bayshore as well is Bayshore paired up. And when they only had two, you saw them attacking together, congregating their fire, doing the kind of things that you have to have in order to win these maps. Connection interrupt coming in just a little bit here. Just trying to figure out what's going on. There'll be a little pause. Yeah, it, 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 we'll go ahead. And so we'll reset. Restart. Yeah, we're going to reset here. I'm sure, they'll give the round counts a piece. But so far, all right. So well, here, here's a good thing, Rob. Waterfall has had a little bit of life, so they're getting kills. They at least got a round. They're on the board. But will they be able to hold it out is the question. Yeah, I, for me, what I'm seeing is a little bit of excitement error. Right. Uh, what happens is they got that game, and then they got ahead again. And instead of sticking to the things that they know work, I was looking at the map, and they started. They just got separated. Right. right? They needed to just talk on their comms, get together, right. pair up, and do it that way. Because you can just trade at that point. If you just trade one for one when it's 4v2, you're fine. It's no big right, deal. Yeah, absolutely. You win. Right? You win 2 0, right? Yeah. Even if you, tra at that point, if you would have tra if at 4v2, if you trade two of your guys for one of theirs, it's still 2v1. Right. right? 2v1, you know I mean? yeah. And at that point, it shouldn't be a problem. It's just, you got to remember, trading up at that point is no big, de no big deal. Right. That's what you should be thinking, okay? Don't worry so much about your bomb play right now. Just kill the other team, okay? That's all that needs to go on right now. And I think they're getting it in their head with Bayshore and Waterfleet that they're when they're on offense and they're trying to place this bomb it's there's nothing to that you can just kill the other team and be done with it the biggest thing that i'm seeing so far with water fleet has got to be one of two things it's either a breakdown
second communication because as we saw in the end of that round, not only was the team separated, but they were getting picked off and it didn't seem like the remaining players knew where the damage and pressure was coming yeah. from. So that's a clear lack of communication there. You know, don't forget, we're in the high school level of esports right here. These are players that are still learning to develop, becoming their own FPS players. So we're going to see errors like that. However, what team will be able to be the ad adaption team to, to really make as little of those as possible? Well, the good thing is that you can fix this. You can fix the talking. You'll know. When, when that error happens, right. you just you can turn your guy to the side and say, hey, that's my bad. Right? Okay. And this little break here gives what really some time to breathe, some time to think, okay, what do we need to do to get back in this? Because 2v1 right now on payload, search and destroy, no big deal. They can win this next map, make it a 2v2, right. and then just keep going. Because they're only down one, they lost the first map, right? No big deal. Now they got to say, all right, we can do this. We know, we've know we won plenty of games. Uh, being down 2-1, I don't know how many times they've been down 2-1 right. and down a map. Right. So... That could be something new for them. Same thing for being in a, uh, a LAN tournament. Not everybody has played on the big stage. Sure. It's different playing on the big stage. It's different when you have a crowd. Maybe your parents are there, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever. All of those players are watching you play. So just take a deep breath. Know what you got to do and kind of let that muscle memory kick in. Absolutely, I am. No no, no stranger to the stage here. Ten-year you know, eSport career for myself. And I just remember being... At their age, I think I was 15 or 16, I competed at Evo East. I took third place in, in one of the biggest fighting game tournaments in the world. And I just remember, hand sweating, palm sweating, extremely nervous. However, it's the players that are able to grip themselves, like you said, and get that mental stability that are able to come out on top. And so far, if I'm Grizz, if I'm, uh, if I'm Grizz, I'm telling my team, if you're the champ and if you're the leader like that, you need to be telling them, it's okay. Right. It's fine. We're going to come out of this on top. And and really holding down that mental because it's such a mentality, as you know, Rob, is such a big part of esports, not just the accuracy of, of playing on a controller. Right. And you have to be able to not only tell your team it's okay, but you have to lead by example. So if you are a semi-pro player or you, you're just a really great player in general, sometimes actions speak louder than words. It's got to be, all right. Not only do you look at everybody and say, it's going to be okay, we're going to be able to do this, right. but when the game starts, you might be able to get that first blood. Because I think for Grizz, if he can get that first blood going uh, and get his confidence back a little bit, then he can really lead this team and get them back into uh, against uh, Bayshore. Right. And then, you know, more importantly, Grizz there, we saw it. Big double kill. I mean, I can't get over that round. Mm -hmm. uh, four to two, and still, it was Bayshore that just got... It was just really sloppy for Waterfleet, because... They, they lost the communication. They were totally separated. All they had to do was hunker and A. Right. They all should have been in that room. But sometimes when you get far ahead, it's easy to kind of forget. Right. It's easy to get a little bit overconfident. Right. Uh, so I would rather that happen to them now uh, than happen like in the finals. Right. Right. I'd rather them feel like, oh, wait, you know, we were we were 4-2. Okay. We still lost. All right. But we didn't. They didn't. It didn't cost them the entire map yet. Uh, so if that would have happened in the last game, that would have been a really issue, a real big issue. But right now, they can still learn. It's two. It's two one. Right. They're getting a little break right now. Get some water. Stretch it out. And then now try to win another. The question though is that for Water Elite, you need to have a sense of urgency. There might not be a finals for Water Elite. They might go home right now. So with that being said, they need to find themselves real quick, real soon. Best of five. Best of three. Yeah, best of five. Best of five. Okay, great. So they have a little bit of time here, not a ton, but if, you go, if you go down 2-0, you're gonna you're have to drunk. reverse. You're gonna have to reverse sweep, and you know just as well as I do in sports. How, how many first, times does that happen? It happens, but it's not. It, it's. Not the common by any it's means. It's not common. It's much better to be 1-1 one, one than to right. be down 2-0 right. uh, because then it'll be that pivotal game 3 uh, as opposed to being down 2-0. And now you there's no room for error, no room for mistakes. Everything's got to be headshots. It's got to be perfect. And right now we haven't seen perfect play from Waterfleet. Fair enough. And you know what? As we get getting ready to get back into a beautiful game of Call of Duty, Black Ops 4, uh, Rabies alongside Rob AJG here on the mic will be your voice for the evening. And so far, I mean... Really blessed to be here. Thank you all so much. And a big shout out to G Insomniacs for inviting yeah. us over. Yeah, G Insomniacs is, I, I'm excited to see what they're going to be able to do for this area uh, because esports is huge. Right. Uh, and 
it's always been huge at like the pro level, uh, but now we see a lot of stuff coming from college, high school level. So you don't have to work like if you're not the quarterback of the the football team, you're not the you know the point guard of the basketball team. You can still be super important to your school. You can still bring home championships. You can bring home the trophies. You just do it through us. Right, and more importantly, these players here today, ladies and gentlemen, are playing for $5,000 scholarship fund. They ain't winning no money. And if you win a state championship for football, you ain't getting no cash. No. You ain't but getting those trophies. You get the trophy, that's it. Nice. This is money right towards the scholarship. I mean, and, that, and, that, and in the end of the day, it's still equivalent of raw money because it's money you're not putting in yourself. That's right. And I... I